everyone, Tony Winston here for Jazz Piano College. The song is The Night We Called It A Day, and hopefully I'll do a better job this time on the video because I forgot to turn the audio on, so I'm doing this for the second time. I listened to several versions, and I've got two different charts here, and there's a few awkward spots in the chord changes, so I'm not really sure what the best way to do it is, so I just took a kind of some ideas from all those different versions. So right here at the beginning, it's a beautiful little melody. This is why I like the song. I think that's just so pretty. That little four note motif there, very nice. Um, we've got A minor seventh over D, and then A flat over D. And you could keep that one over D too if you wanted to. Or really, just play it without those pedal tones. You could do uh, A minor seven flat five. Oh, sorry. And then D seven. Something like that, maybe. And another possibility, which I heard on one of the recordings. Just use two chords, the A flat seventh. chord there. F sharp minor 7. Now, you know, if you can't reach a ninth comfortably, don't worry about it. Put your thumb down over both of those notes. And a B plus 7. You know, that's an altered dominant. So we could put a flat 9 in. And the plus is for the sharp five. I usually call it a flat 13. Or you could put a sharp nine in. And Keith Jarrett put the, the ninth right up there next to the melody. You gotta be careful when you do that, but it, it worked out pretty well for him. And then C sharp minor seven flat five to C 13. Right, C seventh, but with a thirteen. Now another way to do it would be A minor seven, A sharp diminished. That was Diana Krall's version. And you know, I did the tritone substitution. Actually, the A flat is the tritone sub, but I did D second part is really exactly the same. I did hear a version that just went right to a C. This was Keith, Keith Jarrett, I believe. And then to C minor. But he played the major third, even with the minor chord. So. He made it work. Now, I heard a lot of versions did this. And then went to C here. Now, I don't really think that's right. It worked for Diana Krall. She did something like... And that was, uh, I think, a chord like this. Yeah, so C major for whole, whole uh, measure. And then this chord. And then back to C major. Uh, but I think really doing a 2 5 1, and I think that's what this other chart has. Yes, it's like. Put a little B. That's kind of like a diminished chord there. Anyway, two, five, one. And then on to, um, you know, I think this chart is wrong with the A minor, A flat, and G. Every version I heard was like an F sharp minor, seven flat five, and then B altered. And another way to do that would be uh, Put a C on the bottom and a D triad, and then the altered. Moving on. A couple.
couple things you could do here. Or E minor 7 flat 5 to A7. Now, I think that's dying to crawl again. And another possibility is this. So that was B, B flat major 7th and E flat major 7th. That came from this other chart, though. I think I did hear one person, one of the arrangements had something similar to that. I think coming out of the E minor 7 flat 5 to A7 is the smoothest way to get to that B flat. Now let's play that whole bridge again, just see what it sounds like. One, two, three, four. I tried a million things to reharmonize here. Then I listened to Diana Krall and she just stays on E minor, so that's what we'll do. And then right to another E minor. So another possibility here is sharp minor 7, flat 5, and then it's like an E-flat triad with a 6 on top over a D-flat. And then, kind of shifting to the C, and that's what I think Diana Krall did, so let me try to play that again. ideas about uh, rootless voicings. You, know, you could just do this and then here's my D chord. And uh, so there I did A minor 7 with a major 7. A minor with a major 7. And that, you know, is an, it is an F sharp minor 7 flat 5 with the add addition of a 9. So that's kind of like a Bill Evans type thing. And then here, this is, this is a rootless voicing. It's got the root in it, but I'm, I'm going to call it a rootless voicing anyway. So going from C sharp minor 7 flat 5, and, you know, it, it kind of fights against the melody note there, so... Maybe just change it to this. And there I did G minor with a major seventh because that will function not only as E minor seven flat five, but also as C dominant nine sharp 11. So that kind of works kind of nice. Um, and then really, you can't just use rootless voicings all the time, even playing solo, especially playing solo piano. You've got to, got to put the roots in pretty often. But real obvious things, you know, like two five ones. But right there, though, you know, just sounds too much like G major there so even if you use rootless voicings here I had a question about this recently so it would sound better to go like that and then if you did like you know 
B minor seven with rootless voice like that, it, it doesn't sound right. It just sounds like D major seventh. If you had a bass player, it'd sound fine, but yeah. You know. Anyway, we're getting kind of low here. Let's keep the roots on the bottom. Both charts down there in the description, and you know, keep your pencil handy because uh, I'm not going to write in the uh, the reharmonization. So you might want to notate those in as as you watch the video. Um, I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers, and I've probably got like I think the last 20,000 are going to be pretty tough to get because everybody's really interested in this stuff has subscribed already. But if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And uh, anyway. Uh, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.